Because it denied ownership, okay? Deny, okay? Deny, okay? Ownership, okay? Of the property, okay? You couldn't own property. That's the socialist system, okay? So this proved to be a failure. Okay? Socialism crumbled. Communism crumbled in 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 the Soviet Union. Um, 
in, uh, in China. China is now uh, capitalistic because many factories over there, they saw the benefit of this, okay, there are problems with that too, but um, well, socialism, communism failed. That's what the Pope pointed out in his 1991 encyclical on the 100th anniversary. He said, we can look back and say, socialism has failed. 1991, he wrote that encyclical, but something happened in 1989 where he was commenting upon the failure of socialism. Does anyone know what happened in 1989? Something shook the world. It's one of the questions that you answered already. In 1989, Peter, do you remember what happened in 1989? I'll give you a hint in, in, in the Soviet Union, what happened? In 1989, something happened in the Soviet Union. 1989 and 90, what happened to the whole Soviet system? It fell. The Berlin Wall came down. When I was growing up, there was a wall built in Berlin that separated East Germany from West Germany. And people who tried to get over the wall from communism to freedom were shot if they were trying to climb that wall. That wall was torn down in 1989, 1990. The Soviet system failed. Okay? That's why we have other countries now where you didn't really have a recognition of other countries like Ukraine and um, some of the other Soviet nations that were were considered uh, uh, you know, part of the Soviet Union, okay? Now they're independent nations, okay? So the Soviet system failed because, because of these problems, okay? It's atheistic, personal exists to serve the state, denies ownership of property. Um, there's a natural God-given right to property. Our founders recognized this. This isn't a new idea. It's, I don't know why Karl Marx denied property. He thought it would be good, but um, it, it turned out to be bad for people in general. And um, so there's a natural God given right. We can own property. Okay? However, that private ownership of property is, is you could say, um, uh, uh, subject to something else that's even more important. And that is what? In regard to property, we can own property, but there's a higher a higher principle that's, that's got to be kept in mind in regard to property. Okay? While we can own it, okay, on the one hand, what is the other property we talked about yesterday? The property, the, 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 other, the other principle, I should say, in regard to property. Besides private ownership, there's another principle involved here. Just look on your sheets and it's there. Okay, can you tell me what, what is the other principle that we're talking about? Well, that we can own property, okay, there's another principle that's important as well. And what principle is that? Well, look at Page three, number four, okay, Corey. The principle of solidarity. Well, not that, no. It's above, it's above the principle of the God-given right to own property, okay. The destination of goods? The universal destination of goods, okay. So the, the, the right to private ownership of property is subject to a higher principle, okay, which is the universal destination of goods. What is the universal destination of goods? God made the earth and all its goods for everyone. That's basically it. Okay? The goods of the earth are to be shared by everyone. And people can't pour the goods of the earth, even though you can own property, property okay? Uh, God, okay, okay, this is the universal destination of goods, okay? Universal destination of goods. Okay? Uh, 
of goods. Okay? So what does that mean? God made the world. Okay? God created the world. And all that's in it. Okay? For everyone to share in the goods of the earth. Okay? For all okay, to share its goods. Okay? Now, okay, under this comes uh, we, we, we can own private property, okay? We can own property privately. <coughs> Property, okay. Privately, okay. But, okay. But, okay. Uh, in reality, okay. In reality, because God created it, okay. okay. In reality, we use it, okay. We use the goods of the earth. Earth's goods. Okay. This is the Christian idea. And the idea of using the goods, we have to be good stewards. Okay. Good stewards. Okay. <coughs> of everything in the earth. We can't hoard property, we can't just accumulate all the property for a few, and then the, the many are, are without basic goods, okay? Good stewards means, too, we have to take care of the environment, okay? And um, we have to have a care and concern for everyone. We have, to, we have to use the goods of the earth, be good stewards, and keep in mind the principle of the common good. The good of everyone, okay? And that God created the world, all that's in it, to, to share its goods. Or the common good, okay? The common good of all. Common good of all. Now, <clears throat> there's a, um, <clears throat> another principle I want to talk about today, which is on the bottom of page three. Okay. Uh, it's called the principle of solidarity. And uh, this actually, we were answering questions last Thursday uh, on the principle of solidarity. That's why I put that principle on those question sheets. Okay. Um, what is solidarity? Okay. If you could, page one, you read for it. Solidarity is what? A firm. Mm -hmm. Solidarity is firm. And perseverance and making the trip oneself. So it's not going to be Stop there. So, solidarity means uh, we have a commitment to the common good, to the good of all and each individual. Why is that? We're responsible for everyone else. In God's plan, we call everyone else our brothers and sisters. Okay? We can't exclude anyone, forget about people, okay? Um, so this is the principle, the idea of solidarity. And um, it really comes from the idea of the mystical body of Christ. Christ is the head, we're the members of his body. Okay. St. Paul says, if one member suffers, all the member suffers. If one member rejoices, all the members rejoice. Okay. So there's this idea that we're all, we're all cooperating for each other. For, for our good, okay? That's what solidarity is, okay? Another term for it, I put on the bottom of it, is social charity, okay? Charity towards others, okay? We're, we're, we're in solidarity with other people. Now, that's, that's an important term because, I mentioned a few minutes ago, in 1989 and 90, the Soviet Union fell, okay? What was the, the initial cause? Does anyone know what the, what the catalyst practically speaking, for the fall of the Soviet Union was. It was in Poland. It was at a shipyard in 
a city called Gdansk. And there was a man who was head of the, the Union of Workers uh, named Lep Valenza. And the workers stood up and demanded their rights against the Soviet government, okay, which was ruling them, because the Polish people were under, under the, 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 the hard hand of, of the communists. Okay. Uh, so they, the, the workers' movement, they called it solidarity. And it was a workers' revolt against the unjust, oppressive, communist idea that we just talked about. Okay? That was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. Because once it started in Poland, it spread to throughout Russia. People began to stand up and say, we, we want to throw off this unjust government, you know, the atheistic government where we can't own property. That brought down the Soviet Union, practically speaking. Okay? So the union of workers was called solidarity. Now, solidarity as a principle talks about how we're responsible for everyone else. We, we shouldn't be walking by someone that's the, the good Samaritan, okay? Uh, someone's lying in the streets, we just can't ignore them. We, we, we have to have care and concern of others, okay? And um, as it goes on to say there, okay, why don't, why don't you read Corey where it says, solidarity is a virtue. The virtue directed our excellence to the common good. And is found in a, in a commitment to the good of one's neighbor with the readiness in the gospel sense to lose oneself for the sake of the other instead of exploiting him and to serve him instead of oppressing him for one's own advantage. Okay. So we don't want to oppress someone, we want to use them for our own advantage. I talked yesterday about uh, this was common and it's still going on, okay? Big corporations go to a country just to take their minerals, resources, and for our benefit here, and have no care and concern for the good of others. Okay? Or that maybe the pollution that's caused from, from, from mining, okay? the, the bad health effects of, of, of things. Um, or we go in and, and use people and treat them as objects. Okay? Um, uh, in factories, for example. Okay? Um, well, <clears throat> As I say here at the end, NB means nota bene, it means no well. This virtue is also called social charity. Okay? The idea is we're all in this together in the world. We're all in the world together. We're supposed to be helping one another, have care and concern for one another. That's what solidarity is. Okay? So we're in solidarity. We're, in, we're linked with other people. Okay? Just like the members of Christ's mystical body, the church, we all share. One member suffers. Everyone suffers. One member rejoices. We all rejoice. Okay. How do we know that? How do we know that if one member suffers, all suffer? You know what Jesus said to St. Paul? St. Paul's conversion. Okay. That's really the root of this idea. What did Jesus say to St. Paul when he, he knocked him down and blinded him? Does anyone know what, what Jesus said to St. Paul? St. Paul was persecuting the Christians. What did Jesus say to St. Paul? Uh, said, I thought this was saying you persecuted my people. Well, you're close. Okay. Well, Jesus, Jesus said to Saul, he was Saul at the time, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Oh, okay. And what did Saul say? Do you know what Saul said? <coughs> Saul said, well, who are you that I'm persecuting? And Jesus said, I'm Jesus Christ, and you're persecuting. What did Jesus mean by that? So also, why are you persecuting me? Why did Jesus say that accused Saul of persecuting him if Saul was persecuting Christians? Why? Because he was persecuting believers, his children. Okay. Who are members of his body. That's where St. Paul gets the idea of the mystical body. We're all members of the one body of Christ. Okay. If one member suffers, all members suffer. If one member is being persecuted, we all should feel this. Okay. We should all have care and concern about other people. That's the idea of solidarity. Okay? We're all on this together. We should all be helping one another. Okay? Okay. And um, actually, in the next paragraph there, Pope Benedict XVI, the Pope Emeritus, who retired last year, okay, just about a year ago now, okay, um, he talked about solidarity being linked to gratuitousness or free giving. 
And he says here, in order for true justice to exist, it's necessary to add free giving and solidarity. Okay? If you want true justice in the world, okay, you got to realize that we're, we're, we're all in, in this together. Okay? There's this idea of solidarity and free giving to be generous with what we have. The wealthier nations who have all this, this uh, technology and knowledge and, and uh, the skills that we have, well, we should be, we should be sharing this with, with nations that are in, are in dire poverty, okay? to try to lift them up out of their, out of their condition. Okay? I, I, just, I have a little comment on, on this. Um, um, I had a funeral yesterday for a woman, uh, Ida Marchese was her name. Okay? And, uh, she was about 82 years old, I think, when she died. And um, her son came and met with me uh, the day before the funeral to tell me a little bit about his mother. Okay? So I could say some things at the funeral service, at the mass. And um, he talked about growing up in Calabria. Does anyone know where Calabria is? In, yeah, you probably know where Calabria is, right? It's the, in, it's the bottom of Italy. The whole bottom part of Italy is known as Calabria, OK? Yeah. okay? That's Calabria, and it's a poor area. Okay? You had your wealthier cities in the north, you know, Rome and Turin, and Milan is the fashion capital of the world, and all this. Okay, those are well developed. In the south, okay, in the southern part of Italy, it's Calabria. It's mostly little towns, and and uh, people kind of scrape for a living there. There's not much industry there. Uh, people are farmers. They're poor, and um, and this man told me the son of the deceased woman, he said, well, we grew up, and this was, this was uh, 1968, they moved to this country. Okay? So this isn't that far back. Okay? 1968, they were living in a one-room house, probably about uh, maybe from, from that wall to, to here, okay? and, and square. Okay? They had, they had Husband and wife and three children living in one room. That's all they had. <coughs> he said, I remember as a child, myself, my brother, and my sister, okay, as little kids, we would walk two miles to the river. Maybe once a week or so. My mother would put all the clothes in a basket and put them on her head because she was doing the laundry at the river two miles away. They had, they had nowhere to water in their home. Okay? They had no washing machine. Okay? That's why the mother had to walk two miles to the river um, with their children to do the laundry. Okay? And um, they, they lived a very uh, poor existence. Okay? They, they weren't wealthy by any means. And he laughed that uh, the youngest of the brothers was born here. And I met him yesterday, and he said, yeah, my, my brothers and sister always teased me that I had it easy, that I didn't know what it was like living in, back in Italy, in Calabria, uh, in this, in this one-room place. He says, we came here, and boy, it's everything. We have all these utilities. You turn on water, it runs, hot water. You have refrigerators, you have all these things. He says, we have nothing in, in Calabria, okay? Uh, but most of the people in that area didn't have anything, okay? So it wasn't that you know, people were complaining. It was just this was their existence. This is how we lived, okay? Well, um, um, you know, with with technology, you know, people can be lifted up out of um, that type of an existence to live a better life. Okay, that's we should be trying to help people to to raise their their standards to, to lead a more a more dignified life, a, a more um, a more um, uh, life that that lends itself to to more ease and leisure instead of having to scrape out a living. Uh, and you know, walk two miles to do the laundry. Okay, that's that, that's that's how they grew up. Okay, I, I don't think it's that way today in Calabria. Things are a little bit better, but uh, you know, 45 years ago, you know, that's how it was. Okay? Uh, that's how people lived in, in the south of Italy. Okay, I thought it was interesting because I commented on that um, how uh, how you know Jesus loves the poor and uh, doesn't look down on them. Okay, those people had dignity and value and should have been treated by others in, in the same way as, as the wealthy people, the, the fashion kings and queens up in Milan, okay? Doesn't matter, okay? We're all, we're all uh, children in God's eyes, okay? But this idea of solidarity, okay? 
that and 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 gratuitousness. We should be willing to give freely of what we have. Okay. Um, now, on that notion, okay, how many of you have heard of tithing? <coughs> because this is this is on a personal level. Okay. Tithing. Does anyone know, does you know what tithing means? Does anyone, John, you know what tithing is? What is it? <laughs> Giving 10% of what you make, not necessarily to the church, but to charity. Yeah. Oh, you okay, give, I do that. I know what you're talking about. Okay, okay. I'll give, it's, yeah. it's a biblical, it's a biblical teaching. Okay, you take 10% of your earnings right off the top. Okay, and you give it back to God. That's the idea of the universal destination of goods. Okay, God owns everything. So, so God says that we should give. This is in the Old Testament. Okay, that we should give 10%. Okay, uh, and then. At least the Catholic Church recommends five percent, maybe to to some social charities, and five percent to your local church, your local parish. Okay, different uh, people may may want to do that in a different way. Uh, the Catholic Church doesn't have a hard and fast rule on this. They don't say you can't be a member here unless you tithe. Some Protestant churches do. They require you to submit your your income statements, and if you're going to join this church, you have to be giving ten percent of your income. To the church, okay. Yeah. Churches, uh, Protestant churches, are all well, uh, all a number of them. I mean, I, I've talked with a number of Protestants. That your evangelical churches, you know, they will demand that. Usually, the main line, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, they don't usually require that. But some of the other, if you say evangelical or Baptist churches, they may require <coughs> it, depending upon the pastor and their practice. They say, let me see your income statement, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, we expect you know you to be giving 10%. In the Catholic Church, we don't have a, a hard and fast 10% rule, but we recommend that people give a percentage of their income. To think about this, uh, just I just want to make a statement here. Catholics are amongst all the, the de denominations call themselves Christians. We're <laughs> probably among the lowest in, in giving a percentage of our income because people don't think this way. That's why I'm talking about 10%. Because, because some people just don't don't have an idea about giving a percentage. They think, oh, give two dollars to the church, throw it in. Well, what is that if you're making you know hundred thousand dollars a year? What does that amount to? One tenth of one percent? That's not that's not really giving back, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a good stewardship way. Yes. A Christian life. Uh, what's the church that's attached to? Or? I'm not sure. Okay. I've heard of Well, like, don't they have to like pay like a ridiculous amount of money? Like, I think like I heard like that's what you have to pay like an insane amount of money to like be a part of the church. Well, probably it's ten percent. Maybe people consider that an insane amount of money, but it's not. Money worth, yeah. If they change anything, but but I don't think any any of these churches demand more than ten percent. That's that's the biblical, the Old Testament standard. Okay, you give back ten percent. Okay, and you know I never realized this. I never heard of this all the way through grade school, all the way through high school. I started reading the Bible when I started working. And I read the Bible and I thought, you're supposed to give 10%. I thought, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So I started, as soon as I got my paycheck, and that's when you have to do it. You can't wait yes. until you go through your money, okay? Because then you're giving Jesus the scraps, okay? what's ever left over. Jesus doesn't want what's left over. Right when you get your paycheck, 10% off, Cut the check or two checks or whatever. You give you give your your percentage away, then you live on the rest. Okay. The idea is that if you give back to God, you know, ten percent, God will make sure that you have enough to live on, and that that what whatever you have left, the ninety percent, will get you through fine. And I know people who who tithe, uh, you know, religiously, you could say, who um, who do very well. Okay. And it's the people oftentimes that that. That don't tithe at all or, or give very little, uh, that that they struggle economically. God rewards people who are generous. Okay, God rewards our generosity. Seth, you had a comment. Yeah, I was just going to point out like the the heart, the, the the heart of the giving. It's not just giving the money. It is where your heart's at. Like the parable with that with the lady that went to the church. That those rich guys were throwing down sacks of money at the at the altar and the offerings and stuff. But then you had this old lady give like a coin or two. But it, right. was, it was all she had. Right, and she just didn't fret about it because she was just giving it to God because she knows she knows it was the right thing. She gave two mites, the smallest amount of money in the Roman coinage, just like pennies. Two mites, like like portions of pennies. What did Jesus say? She gave more than anyone else. Why? Because she gave 
all that you had to live on, basically. Yeah, so, the heart was yeah, it's the idea of you, you give with this mentality. Well, the mentality is it all belongs to God. Okay? It's all God's. Everything we have, any money we earn, it's really all God's. So you're giving back to God what is His already, at least 10%, okay? And then you're, you're living on the rest, okay? And, uh, you know, I started doing this when I read about it. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if a family would maybe, uh, that adjustment might be too big of a one, at least they could start out with, you know, a smaller percentage, but to give some percentage. And young people who are just making money, you know, if you're out, you know, making money for spending money, think about giving back 10%, you know, right off the top. You know, I make, I make $20, $30, you know, I, I'll give back, uh, you know, 2 or $3, give that to the church, throw that in the basket when, when you know, the collection time comes, okay? Yeah. And, and here's another aspect of this, okay? When we die and we stand before God, we're going to be judged. Now, there's the parable of the talents. Okay? Talents were, were a, a sum of money. Okay? Okay. The parable of the talents, okay, uh, one, one steward gets, uh, gets uh, ten talents, one gets five, and one gets one talent. Okay? And then the, the, um, the owner of the business, or the steward, uh, he, he, he goes away, he comes back, he says, okay, now, uh, Give me an accounting of, of your stewardship. Okay, how did you do? You received ten. He says, I made another ten for you. Here it is. Okay. The one who said gave five says, okay, I made another five. The one that got one talent, he said, Well, I, I just buried my talent. I didn't do anything. Okay. And he's thrown into, into the prison because you wasted your talent. Okay. You didn't you didn't you didn't make it uh, fruitful. We're going to be judged on how much God has given us and how generous we're going to be. And how good stewards we, we have been. Okay? If we're, we've been good stewards, uh, what our stewardship is, not only our, our money, but I mean our intellectual abilities, our talents, okay? If you, if you blow it and don't, and don't use it in a good way, you're going to be judged harshly. Same with our money. People who have great wealth, they're going to be judged very harshly. To whom more is given, more is expected. Okay? That's what Jesus says. You're given more intelligence, more, more talents. You have to use them as good stewards, and it, it includes our money, our income. Okay? People who, who, who make it very big, you get a good investment in the stock market, okay? And people make millions of dollars and don't give it hardly a dime to, to anyone. Well, you know, they're going to be judged harshly, okay? There are all kinds of people out there who are, who are starving, who need our assistance, okay? When I hear about, um, you know, people who are, you know, have a, have have suffered uh, from a hurricane or or uh, you know tsunamis. Okay, that was a couple of years ago. That was you know we had a couple of tsunamis, tidal waves. Okay, I mean I cut checks for you know a lot of money, just you know send it off to the relief organizations because they need money right away. Okay, they need it. So um, I'm, what am I going to do with it? Uh, that's that's another parable Jesus tells with with. Uh, the man who stores up all his grain, he builds new grain bins. He says, now I can eat, rest, and, and be happy. And Jesus says, you fool, you're going to die tonight. Where will all this pent-up wealth of yours go? You just used it for yourself. Okay? With no concern for anyone else. Okay? No. So we have a responsibility as good stewards okay, to, uh, to, to spread the wealth, so to speak. God rewards us with wealth. We have to, you know, be generous. That's why the Pope says free giving, okay? Give it away. We, we're we're, we're going to die, okay? We're going to be put in the grave, and you have all this wealth in the bank, you know, you're going to be judged on it. So if, we're, if God is good to us and blesses us with wealth, well, we, we want to share that wealth, okay? Um, you can give above 10%. Okay? Uh, I, as a priest, am able to do that. I get free housing, basically. Okay? They supply me a rectory, so I give. A lot of my money away. So I'm able to do that. And families in need, okay? But uh, we have to keep that in mind. We have to be good stewards. And solidarity is this idea that we're all in this together. We have to help one another, okay? Be, be, be generous with what God has given us, okay? And um, now, go to, to the next, well, actually, um, the last line on page three, okay? Uh, this is Pope Benedict speaking. Charity and truth requires that 
shape and structure be given to those types of economic initiatives which, without rejecting profit, okay, you don't want to reject profit and say profit isn't important, okay, it's important for a business, okay, without rejecting profit, aim at a higher goal than the mere logic of exchange of equivalence, meaning I want my money for my goods, okay, of profit as an end in itself. Okay. Now, okay. is profit the only one reason to operate a business? Okay. Is, is, is that the only reason you're in? It, you, you have a business, uh, you have a, a factory, you have a, some type of a business. Is, is your sole and only concern making a bigger profit? Okay. Well, there are differences of opinion out here. And I'm going to show you the differences with um, a sheet I can hand out here. Okay. Uh, this is uh, two different views. I think it's, it's, it's one. Oh, How many of you have ever heard of a man named Milton Friedman? Okay. Milton Friedman. You may. No one more, okay? Okay, uh, I, I'm just I'm just curious, John Parker, how do you know about tithing? Uh, church, they had a presentation. They did? Oh, what church is that? St. Peter's. In where? It was North. North. Uh, oh, St. Peter's here in town. Yeah. Okay. They had a presentation on tithing, huh? Okay, that's good. Okay. Actually, we're, we're going to start something on that with uh, with our people at St. Therese on the south side. We have a presentation on that. Because many people don't know about it. Okay? Like I said, I never heard about it until I was an adult. I never heard of tithing. I think we had a video on it in the church. I don't know if that video came Did you? Okay. It was a while ago. But do you practice it? That's the big thing. That's the next question. Do you practice tithing? My what do you get? Well, what you get? I always do it. Well, you should. Start out now. <laughs> Start out now. If you have a job, you're making the money. Okay. Or. Or if you get a gift of money, and someone gives you money for your birthday, just give 10% away. Okay? What do you guys do for college? But God, if you're generous, God will provide for you. That's the key. Okay? If you're generous and give away, God will make sure you have enough to provide. Okay? That's the whole idea. I am. I love to show the job. I always say with my birthday. You give 10% away? Oh, no, that's a good question. I always want to wonder. Like, what about people that, like, sell drugs? Because they, like, like drug money. <laughs> well, well that's, like, that's, that's like what Al Capone did. Al Capone was loved by people because he was making, he was bootlegging liquor and making money, but he was getting a lot to the poor. So the poor thought Al Capone was great. But if you were in business competition with him, you didn't think he was so great because you were... You were put to death. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, you could say it's, you could say it's a good deed for him, yes. But, but... Okay. If someone if someone is giving giving away wealth on the one hand and killing people on the other, his good means nothing in God's eyes because he's out of his good grace. So, so what so, is he only so he's giving a lot to like the poor But it doesn't matter. Anything if someone is not leading a good life, if they're not in a state of grace, whatever good they do has no value in God's eyes. Okay? Because you're cut off from God. His grace. Okay. So you can't say on the one hand, well, I'm going to, I'm going to be murdering people and and, uh, and and gaining money illegally, but look at I'm, I'm giving away money to the poor. No, 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 no. that doesn't wash with God. Okay. So anyway. Is Robin Hood not good either? Does he steal money? Well, well, Robin Hood was, was stealing, was taking money from the rich to give to the poor who had nothing, and. Uh, you know, it's that's 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 a Is that like still a bad thing? Yes, well, it depends. Stealing is not necessarily moral sin unless it's 
Unless it's, it's, it's a serious amount. Yeah, like if it's like $10 from like a super poor person, then it's bad. Like you can't pay for some. If it's like $10 from like a millionaire, it's not What if you still like TV? Like you still like a rich man TV. What if you what? What if you still like a rich man TV? Like what if you robbed time? Are you asking if you still on TV? Well, I agree. Well, 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 between misdemeanors and felonies. You steal a, an object worth so much money, it's a felony. That's, that's the equivalent you could say of, a, of in God's eyes of moral sin. Anyway, anyway, take a look at the sheets. Okay? Take a look at the sheets I just handed out. Okay. Uh, Milton Friedman versus the teaching of Christ as expressed by Pope John Paul II. Okay? Now, the economist Milton Friedman, very famous, okay, he authored a book called Capitalism and Freedom, okay? saying that capitalism it promotes freedom, okay? we, it allows the, the, free, uh, you know, the free exchange of goods, and people are better off under this system than socialism, communism, okay? But this is what he said. There is one and only one social responsibility of a business, to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits. That's, he says, that's it. Okay? You're in business. Your goal is to increase profits okay? for, for those who are owning the business, for the shareholders. That's it. As long as it stays within the rules of the game, which is to say engages in open and free competition without deception, you're not doing fraud, then you're doing what a business should do, and that's it. Okay? Well, uh, that doesn't sound like what we're talking about here, Okay, uh, you know, the common good and and solidarity with others, okay? Uh, the popes, because of the teaching of Christ, have asked people, okay, rethink this idea. It's not just prophets, okay? Uh, Pope John Paul II, this is the encyclical you've been reading, Gentessimus Annus, the 100th anniversary, 1991. This is number 35. The church acknowledges the legitimate role of profit as an indication that a business is functioning well, okay? Yeah, we, we admit, you have a business, you have to make a profit. You can't be operating at a loss because then it's the, prop, the business isn't going to, to, to make it, okay? So, yes, we admit that, that business has to make a profit, okay? When a firm makes a profit, this means the productive factors have been properly employed, corresponding human needs, duly satisfied, but, this is a big but, okay? Profitability is not the only indicator of a firm's condition. It's possible for the accounts to be in order, and yet people who make up the firm's most valuable asset to be humiliated and their dignity offended. Wait, 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 pardon me. We're not done yet. We're not done. We're not done. People, just a couple minutes, okay? Thank you for the changes. We're not finished, okay? I want to finish this point, okay? So, okay. <clears throat> what is he saying here? It's possible to be making a profit, yet. And yet, for the people who make up the firm's most important assets, okay, the people who work for the firm are the most important asset of the firm, or should be viewed that way, to be humiliated and their dignity offended. Okay? How, could, how could the workers be humiliated and their dignity offended? What are some ways that that could happen? If what, for example, if you're giving if you're giving slave wages, okay, you're not paying a good wage, okay. If you're requiring people to work, you know, very long hours, overtime, not not compensating them, okay. okay? So we're we're going to continue on this tomorrow because this is going to lead us to another big issue. I mean Friday. Thank you. Okay. Friday. Yes. <laughs> 